Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the Xenostar Z61 and the Xenostar Z73. I'm going to go over specs, I'm going to go over pricing, I'm going to go over what makes them different from each other, and also try and help you decide which one's for you. Because I know when I first started astrophotography, I was wondering, should I save $120 and go with the Z61? Or should I go with the Z73? And I was really confused because they were similarly specced and they just looked like the same refractor. But today, I'm going to help you with that. At a glance, the Zenith Star 61 and Z73 have a lot in common. Both will shoot at a focal ratio of f5.9 but the aperture on the Z73 is quite a bit larger. The Z61 has a 61mm aperture, and the Z73 measured almost 73mm, it was more on the 72mm side. And this could be due to the way I was measuring it, I was just really careful around the objective lens. Both telescopes are a doublet in design, and both of them will sport FPL 53 glass, so you're going to get excellent color correction out of both of them. Here's what they look like side by side. Try and ignore the ZWO EAF focuser and also the angle rotator on the larger Z73. It won't come with that. But both of them have the field flatteners installed. And yes, you're going to want to spring for the additional cost for the flattener. The flattener is really important. It'll ensure that you have sharp and round stars in the edges. And with the field flattener, you'll able to screw in a 2-inch filter onto it because if this is your first scope you may not have access to either a filter drawer or a filter wheel and here it is getting screwed back onto my Z73. The Z61 works exactly the same way. It's also worth mentioning that both scopes will handle up to a full frame sensor so you're covered there. You can also use a one and a quarter inch filter you're just going to need a two inch adapter ring so that you'll be able to fit that one and a quarter inch filter into the field flattener. Both scopes will come with a handlebar that you can mount a guide scope to, telescope mounting rings, and also a dovetail plate which will attach to your mount. Both scopes will also come equipped with a dual speed rack and pinion focuser. The Z61 however has a two inch focuser and the Z73 will have a two and a half inch focuser that is quite a bit beefier. On the other side of the focuser, you'll find another knob that also acts as a focusing knob and a thermometer, which I thought was pretty neat. The Z73 and Z61 will both have retractable dew shields, a screw on adapter for one and a quarter inch eyepieces so you can do visual astronomy, and last but not least, a lens cap that also acts as a Batnoff focusing mask. Pretty cool, huh? At the time of this recording, you can get a Xenostar Z61 for $592, the Z73 for $713, the field flatteners for both of them cost $218, and there is another option for flatteners as well. You can get a adjustable reducer flattener for the Z73 for $284, and also the Z61 is the same price at $284 as well. The reducer flattener will increase your field of view and also reduce your focal ratio by 0.8 times. Basically, with the reducer flattener installed, you're going to get a wider field of view and faster imaging times with it on your telescope. Oh yeah, and before I forget, you also get these cool William Optics cases uh, to store both of your refractors in. So, that is pretty cool, William Optics. A lot of stuff in there. <laughs> okay, so which one should you get? Well, that answer is not so simple. The first thing you want to do is figure out what mount you're going to use or that you have. If you had a Star Adventurer, I would think that the lighter 3.2 pound of the Zenith Z61 would be better for that. And remember, when you're figuring out the weight of your telescope, it's not just the telescope weight. It's the weight of the telescope plus the cameras and filter drawers or filter wheels that you're putting on with it. So it's not just the scope itself, it's actually the scope and all, is, all its accessories. Because the Z73 weighs five and a half pounds by itself. 
and each mount has a certain payload that it can handle. So you don't want to max out the payload, otherwise the tracking on your mount is going to suffer. Again, that's probably another video altogether on its own, but I guess the key takeaway from this is figure out the weight of your scope and then how much your mount can handle. The second thing is field of view. Field of view is really important actually. And you want to determine what kind of astrophotographer you're going to be. So are you going to do like super wild wide <laughs> So are you going to do super wide field or do you want a little bit more zoom? Now both these refractors are actually classified as wide field refractors. It just really depends on what type of camera sensor you're going to put in front of them. But I think that's a, another video altogether. But there's an easy way to figure out which scope is better for you. And you want to download an app called Stellarium. Stellarium is pretty cool because it allows you to enter in the camera that you're using and the telescope that you're using. And you'll be able to see the field of view in that program. And that's a really good way to figure out, you know, which refractor is going to be better for you because one refractor is wider than the other. The Z61 shoots at 360 millimeters of native focal length, and the Z73 shoots at 430 millimeters of native focal length. So there's a little bit of difference between the two, and you don't think uh, that would make a lot of difference, but it really does. And Stellarium will help you decide which refractor is going to be just fine for you. Okay, uh, you also want to look at aperture. The aperture on the Z73 is a lot bigger than the Z61. Um, the bigger the aperture is, the more resolution you're going to get in your photos. Uh, the bigger aperture is going to capture more photons, so you're going to get more detail in every sub-exposure that you should take. So what does the pictures look like? Well, I'm really happy with both of them, to tell you the truth. Um, sometimes I like to shoot way wider, and then sometimes I want to shoot kind of more boomed in, so I'm glad I actually own both of them. But here are some photos that I took with both refractors. Well guys, I hope this helped you out in some way. If it did, let me know and I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.